back here on Kent 73 Imperial. We are going to get this door panel off so we can access the power window motor and replace our gears. I've already pulled the uh, bezel and lens for the courtesy light. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull these two chrome caps here and here, get these screws out. We're gonna undo these screws right here, on the edge of the weather stripping. And then we're gonna start pulling this apart here. So the screws for the door pull are just underneath those caps and you just take a small flathead and wiggle it and you can pull the caps off and there they are. It's also two screws in here. We gotta pull the handle. And don't forget, ashtray's gotta come out. We gotta pull the screws here for the window switch and cigarette lighter panel. Lots to do. Oh, and don't forget the uh, little knob for the lock. Alright, so we got the one screw out in here. Ashtrays out. There's all of our wiring for our window switch and our dome light and our ashtray. So we're going to undo all that, pull this away, and then we got to get ready to get this handle off here. All right, door panel's off. Someone's obviously been in here before as you can see um, this is the type of clip the panels are held on with so once you have all your fasteners out you got to go in and gently pry it all up and off and then lift up and out and here we are all right so we've undone our four regulator and motor mounting bolts you can see we've dropped it down here. Now we need to get the motor off and out. That's our next fun little task. So the trick to get the regulator free of the window is there's two rollers. You can see them here, one and two, that go into this channel. So that channel, you gotta pull the window up, get it up, and pull those out. Once you do that, huzzah. All right, our regulator assembly is out. Time to replace our gear set off of the regulator. And remember, the regulator is spring-loaded, so... <laughs> Gingerly take your bolts out. Be careful not to let it launch everything everywhere. But it's real easy to get it back in. So we'll get that handled when we reassemble. All right, first order of business. We gotta take the screw out here. So that's Phillips. We'll get that out right now. It's here. Right here in the cover. And I'm pretty sure the pucks are pretty well toasted. That's why we are here. Things really nasty, dirty, greasy. Ah! Our cover. We gotta get this cover out to get to the pucks, which are probably the reason for our failure. Come on, baby. Ooh, the whole assembly came out. Look at all that chunky, monkey, yucky grease and scuzz. All right, so. Sure, our pucks are dead. There is our main drive gear, which we have all new. So I can go there, get in here and check on our pucks. Uh, is pulverized plastic pucks for the clutches. Yucky, yucky, 
yucky. Look at that, all over my hand. So there's our old gear. There's our new gear with pucks, fresh pucks. There's our new metal drive gear for the actual regulator. So we got a big old bag of grease and our O-ring that this didn't even have that goes on the shaft. Oh, it does have it. It's just F like everything else. Um, so we'll be rebuilding this baby right now. In and greased up. And we slid in our drive gear. So we're gonna get some grease, put it around these teeth, slide this baby in. cover on with our fresh screw and then we're gonna put this baby in the vise get that where we want it so the magic trick to getting the spring back where you need it and obviously it doesn't have to be in the exact same tooth that you were in but it's just got to have preload is you gently clamp this into the vise not to where you're bending it but just where it holds it and then you can actually start the top bolt of the motor, this guy, a couple threads, and you can kind of use it as a handle to help you pull everything back. And then once you get it up there and hold it, get all the screws started, a couple threads, and just evenly work them in, and away they go. We almost got it back together. So after fighting and fighting and fighting, because I'm one person, and this is like a two person job, um, we got both of our top rollers in, the bottom roller is close. We've got one bolt in it holding it here. So just gotta get that other roller in. I'm actually gonna loosen this up so I can pull that track off, put it in the track, bolt it back, and then bolt the regulator. Fun fact. Yay! So the big trick on the fuselage cars and their window regulators, 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 anyway, the big trick for their window regulators, um, the glass, of course, has its own track to go up and down, and that's screwed on to the opposite side of the glass on the back panel of the door. So the big difficulty is having enough strength and or manpower, obviously it'll be easier with two people, to get the regulator in and situated and figured out where you want it. Then you need to get the top two rollers in the track. And the roller that has the pivot on it, which has the roller that goes to the opposite direction for this outside roller here, That needs to go towards the front of the door on the top. So you need to get your two top rollers in, then balance those two so they don't come out, which is the hard part, getting them to not come out, and then put this top screw right here. That guy right there. Gotta put that guy in. Then you can kind of work the motor around with the switch and your arm and whatever other contortionist item you're doing then get all the rest of the motor mounting screws in right there one there one two three get those in loosely and then i figured out that it's easier 
to take these three out here for this lower track. Get your lower track slid on that outer roller. Tighten it all up and you're good to go. Back together, I gotta get a bulb for the courtesy light. But I'll reassemble that in the morning. But back together. All right, Kent. So checking back here on Key Lime Pies AC. You uh, knocked her off over the weekend when you picked up Lila LaMonaco. And you texted me this morning, said, hey, the air isn't cold. And well, we had it blowing ice cold. So looking at our pressures, it's definitely not overcharged at all. But it looks like our compressor isn't compressing. So we need to dig in here and see if we need to get a compressor or what we got going on here. Two on the bottom. I've had a couple places go, oh, the ones with one on the middle work too. No, they don't. Try again. 90.